Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video, and in this video we're continuing the series where I'm trying to go from the Earth to Mars, but instead of landing at Olympus on Mars, I'm going to target one of the moons. I don't think I've actually decided which one yet, so right now I'll just make the decision that we're going to land on Phobos. Uh, like I mentioned in the last video, uh, HAL Base unfortunately doesn't work with Orbiter 2016, so we'll just pretend that it hasn't been built yet, I guess, and we're just going to be pioneers and we're just going to land on some part of the moon that we can find. Let's go ahead and switch camera views here. Alright, so in the previous video we got our Transex plan set up. It was pretty easy to do because I chose a date that I had already found works for an Earth to Mars journey in a previous video that I recorded. And you can see here with the heading, we're coming around to 90, so I also cut the... I, I stopped the last... Uh, I ended the last video just before we got to 90, so that I have a couple seconds here before we uh, before we have to get going. So let's go to look at the uh, you know our resources and everything. And I just want to take a moment to top up anything that's drained. I mean, we only we're only missing a little bit of APU here, but I feel like we might as well go ahead and uh, top up everything before we take off. And locks we have used just you know less than a thousandth of a percent of our locks but but as long as we're here we'll go ahead and top up everything so that's our locks and that's our APU and those are already full all right so we'll turn off our hoses and we'll turn on external cooling turn on the APU and turn on AF control and to be perfectly honest with you I actually started to record this part once already and I couldn't get off the runway before uh, I couldn't get up in the air before I hit the end of the runway so I'm gonna try something a bit different here I'm gonna put in full up elevator trim I guess maybe I won't be doing that it doesn't seem to want to let me do that so so let's think about that then because that was actually my plan for this video because I have been noticing that, let me see here, oh there we go, I wonder why it wasn't working in the other view, but I'm thinking if I have full up elevator trim before I take off then I'll have the extra, you know, uh, rotation that I need when we get down there. Let me take a look, quick look at the outside, yeah we do have full up elevator trim. Um, I might also use the keyboard because I feel like maybe my joystick has some slop in it that I have to calibrate out. At any rate, let's uh, keep an eye on our, our eject orientation here. So just a couple more minutes, uh, but we'll time warp through it and we'll be... I'm going to just get us essentially as close to 90 as I can. Just because... Uh, Alright, so we're, we're, we're going to go with that because by the time we get fiddling around here will be ready so H to bring up our HUD I'm gonna zoom out cuz I hate that super zoomed in view oh, there we go right rather I should say I'm gonna zoom in okay time to go so uh, activate interlock dynatherms connected infracells up mega thrusters are go leave a comment down below if you know what that's a reference to Alright, let's hope we can get off the runway this time. Maybe I'll include the uh, the previous failure as a uh, as an outtake or something. V1. There's V1. Rotate. There's a rotate call out. Yeah, the keyboard definitely seems to have. Well, maybe. Yeah, even with full up elevator and full, I'm pulled all the way back on the joystick. And we just barely, we just barely got off the ground before hitting that hump. And the last time I tried it, I didn't make it. So that's something I'll have to keep in mind for XR5. Holy crap. This thing is so different from the XR2. Oh my gosh. 
Nobody died. Yet. I just... Wow, this is so heavy compared to the other vehicle. I mean, I know it, but at the same time, flying it is so radically different. It's just everything is delayed and like... Oh, the other thing is I have the elevator trim, so that's affecting what's happening here. Let me zero that out. Alright, I apologize for that super crazy sloppy takeoff. That definitely did not meet regulation standards. But uh, just in the interest of continuing on with the mission, we're not gonna. I'm not gonna redo it. Uh, but yeah, just yikes, yikes. All right, so trying now to get on track with relative inclination and everything so mm, I have a very strong dislike for this vessel all of a sudden not just because it's making me look like a fool but uh, it's so squirmy and heavy but anyway uh, so those that buzzing sound we're hearing is uh, as we're burning through some of the fuel that we put into the cargo area. So that was Mach 1. And we're going to go for a similar ascent profile as the XR2 because I don't quite know what the ideal profile is between the two. So, But if, if we can make it, uh, this, is, this is good practice though because if I want to do that Jupiter flight, this is definitely the vessel I'm going to have to take simply because I don't have, you know, I don't really have another option. I don't have the the uh, the aero freighter, and I don't have a way to launch. I don't have a good way to launch the XR2 at the moment on a uh, on a launch vehicle. Uh, you can use the the Falcon Heavy. Uh, talk to Dimitri about that. I have done that in the past with Orbiter 2010, and I just hated the way it looked. It looked ridiculous. And from what I from what I understand, it doesn't it it hasn't gotten any better. It still looks silly, so I don't plan on doing that. Okay, yeah, just keeping this thing up above the horizon is a challenge. So yeah, we burned through quite a bit of our fuel just on takeoff here. Uh, quite a few of our external fuel modules. I can hear them going out. So I heard Mach 2, so I'm going to say we can probably think about a scram ascent. I don't know how practical that is, uh, or how how much how that's going to work out with this vessel, but we're going to use it to... Now I am curious, if I back off the main engine, I'm slowing down immediately, so I feel like I still need some main engine, even with scram. But I'm backed off the main engine pretty pretty far. I guess eventually the scram acceleration will catch up. Let me back off the main engine all the way again, and I'm immediately slowing down. So we're going to continue with main engine for a little bit here. And scram simultaneously, because we I'm assuming we're still getting some acceleration out of the scram. I probably should have included some scram fuel in the cargo area. Didn't really think about it. But I'm guessing we're going to get to a point where um, I'm not paying super close attention to the relative inclination. Some kind of my mind's busy with other things, but Okay, so we're I'm just rolling just ever so slightly. All right, so we are picking up some horizontal speed. Now I feel like my hands aren't so full just trying to keep this thing under control. So I'm gonna back off the main engine again and just see if the scram engines are accelerating us. Mm, so we're not quite there yet, so I feel like we still need to burn the main engine for a bit. But I have backed off the main engine substantially. You can see, you know, we're... What is that, like 35%, 40%?
but eventually I'm thinking we'll get to a point where you know we can we can burn up our scram fuel otherwise there's no point in bringing it okay so I don't think I have to worry well I probably do have to worry about the temperature so let me keep an eye on that but let me bring our white line closer to our current location is that going to be positive or negative So currently, relative inclination is going up, which we don't want. So I'm going to roll the vessel a little bit this way. That's the wrong way. And a little bit that way. And that's good. All right, vessel is increasing in temperature, but not... Uh, although I probably actually should pitch up a little bit because this thing is very much, much different than the XR2, and I don't want to... Um, I need. To, I feel like I probably need to think ahead far farther, because the XR2 is very maneuverable, and you know we can make snap decisions in many cases. All right, let's take down the main engine. Okay, so the scram fuel is accelerating us at this point, so I'm just gonna burn through the scram fuel. Temperature is going down, so I'm just gonna lower the nose just a little bit just to keep as much uh, velocity as I can or keep as much of the acceleration I can in the horizontal direction while we're still, you know, down where we are in the atmosphere. Watching the relative inclination. And go down to a finer setting on that. Currently we're at 8180, or 0 0.07, and it's going down, so I'm happy with that. Watching my temperature. Quite a ways to go for orbital velocity. But I feel like we have things pretty well under control. That was an atrocious takeoff. And I'm not quite entirely sure how to make that takeoff better. Given that the runway just doesn't seem to be long enough. I guess one thing I could do. Something I'll have to keep in mind for future flights. I'll have to position the XR5 so that it's as far up the runway as possible so that we have as much room as we possibly can or I'll have to try to find a longer runway but I think we already had the XR5 on the longest runway at Cape Canaveral but maybe I can find another launch site with a longer runway I mean I'm assuming that all that cargo space can be used from Earth. Maybe it's the case that you need to take off with the XR5 empty and then re like you have to you can't fill, you can't fill up that cargo space till you're in space or something. Seems like that would be an odd thing, but uh, relative inclination in uh, climbing. So let's roll our vessel a little bit, and I don't want to overroll it. Temperature is creeping up ever so slightly, so keep an eye on that. 3,000 meters per second. So we got ways to go. So I just saw that white line flip, so I'm immediately going to start rolling the vessel a bit. But eesh, it's super... Yeah. Yeah, the XR2 flies like a dream, and... And I always thought the Delta Glider felt like a tank compared to the XR2, but, I mean, jeez. But the regular Delta Glider is much easier to control than this thing. So, uh, yeah, once again, I feel the need to apologize for that horrible, horrible takeoff. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely try to do a better job on the next time I use this vessel. But, you know, I just, I don't have a lot of experience with the XR5 to begin with. And I literally have not flown this thing in six years. So. All right, let's see how things are coming on. So relative inclination is down to 0.78. And going down, temperature is under control. We're at 44 kilometers in altitude, and we're at about half orbital velocity, really close to it. And 
scram is coming down where we've used about half of it. I have a feeling we're not going to get through all of it. So I'm going to ro roll the vessel a little bit in the other direction now that I can see the white line swinging on me. And easier said than done. So, yeah, just uh, flying up through the atmosphere, trying to get into orbit, trying to use up our scram fuel so that we don't, um, so that we're not, we're not carrying a bunch of that out into space with us. If we do have leftover scram when we get into space, we're just going to vent it because it's a waste of mass at that point and we have no use for it once we're out of the atmosphere. And we did burn through two or three uh, if not four of those external fuel modules that we put in the bay so we will want to dump those as well alright so we're about 50 kilometers let's roll the vessel just a bit and I'm, I'm definitely getting a little bit better handle on this because in the XR2 when I would want to roll the vessel I would you know roll it and then when I got where I wanted I would kinda kick the the flight stick back in the other direction and be fine. With this one I'm finding that when I want to roll it I have to roll it in the direction I want to go and then just be patient because it, it's like delayed. It's almost like it's lagging. So that's why my my ascent, was, uh, my takeoff from the runway was so terrible because I was just way over controlling. Now if it were the XR2 I was giving it the right amount of control but uh, enough excuses. Um, so we're almost 5,000 meters per second. We're at 51, almost 52 kilometers. Temperatures under control. Scram fuel is being used up. Current apoapsis is showing at 52 kilometers. So a little bit longer here to fly. I'm not quite sure what the time, uh, the real, like in real time, how long it takes this one to get into orbit as compared to the XR2. I've got a pretty good sense for the XR2 and Delta Collider. They're really close to the same. But I feel like this one's taking longer. Could be wrong. Let's uh, make a quick adjustment here. So relative inclination is coming down according to Transex. And I think we actually might burn through all our scram fuel after all. So we're at 55 kilometers in altitude. We have about 2,000 meters per second more of horizontal speed that we're going to need. And as we get closer and closer to that number, I'll try to get my altitude up higher. You know, just kind of stair stepping my way up through the sky. All right, so what's happening with our relative inclination? Currently it's going, so currently we're at zero, zero with three decimal points of precision. Of course it just flipped. Let's see if I can roll a bit that direction. Roll a bit more in that direction. Okay, so now it's going down. Take out some of that roll. All right, how are we on scram? So we're almost out of scram, so I think we will burn through all of it. And then we'll roll back the other way a little bit. We're at 58 kilometers just over, coming up on 6,000 meters per second. So we have about 1,500 more to go. Morning. Scram fuel. Okay, there's our scram fuel uh, call out, indicating that we're almost out. So maybe I'll start pitching the vessel up a little bit more now. And coming up to the end of our scram. Information. APU fuel 80%. Okay, scram fuel, three, two, one, empty, full power on the main engine. And closing the doors. Oops. 
I guess I should have closed those doors all the way before I engaged the full power of the main, but I got impatient. Not a good thing. All right, so we're above 60 kilometers now, 61. And yeah, we're just gonna climb out a little bit. There went another fuel module. So let's try to roll just a little bit. I'm not quite sure which direction I need to be rolled in for the relative inclination at the moment. Looks like I chose the right direction, so that's good. So it's coming down. But we can't fuss over it too much as we are getting really close now to orbital velocity. Uh, still have about 700 meters a second to go. Let me start rolling out the other way though. Just to try to slow down the relative inclination, although I think I rolled too much. Okay, so... Alright. Temperature's okay. 7,000 meters a second, so we're really close to orbital velocity now, and it comes together really fast at the end, so we need to pay attention to that. And I'm not gonna, I can't afford to look at the relative inclination anymore. So we're at 72, 7.2, I should say. APA 105, okay, now it's coming together. All eyes on APA. Start backing down the main. 170, 180, 190, kill the main. All right, now we're just going to continue, uh, let our momentum carry us up until we're high up enough above the atmosphere that uh, we don't have to worry about flight stick controls. And we can open the radiator, and when we get up to a certain point, we'll open up the cargo bay and dump out the the spent fuel modules. I think we've got less than one left. All right. So there's the relative inclination. Let me see if I can roll back the other way. No chance. So let's turn off AF control. Go to rotation. And we're just going to roll the vessel a bit the other way. Because even though we're at 80 kilometers, I mean, at least with orbiter physics, apparently we still have some amount of atmosphere here that does affect our relative inclination. Let me see which way do I need to roll, though. In case I'm going the right way. Okay, we're just going to hold this. And let me slide the flight stick out of the way. We're done with it. Um, let me leave orbit. Uh, let me leave surface up for now. And we're gonna just get a little bit further up here, and then we're gonna end this part of the video. But I want to make sure that we're, you know, we've completed our ascent. I think I can go ahead and turn off the APU now. But I guess before I do, I'll go ahead and deploy the radiator since we're high up enough that we don't have to worry about the radiator causing us issues. At least if this were the XR2. I was just kind of wondering, did I ever raise the landing gear? Maybe that was why I had such a hard time, but I did raise the landing gear. So there are the radiators coming out. Let me time warp through that. And now we'll turn off the APU. And we're basically in space. We're going to have uh, an orbital maneuver to complete before we worry about too much. And that's a thousand seconds away. So let's go ahead and call this a part. So let me switch over to orbit. Let's do control S to save where we're at at the moment. Control P to pause, switch camera views. And that's gonna wrap it up for this part. So we completed our ascent. And when we come back, we're gonna circularize our orbit, set up our maneuver for uh, Mars and go on from there. If you like this video, please leave a comment down below and I will see you in the next part.